So it's summer and with the vaccine being a little bit more widespread and people starting to venture out a little bit more, I think that portable projects during this summer are gonna be more important than ever. And there is nothing more portable than a sock. Lately, I've been casting on sock after sock. And I think that a lot of people do that in the summer because they're looking for portable projects that don't have a lot of fabric draping on their bodies and that are quick to knit. So I wanted to talk today about one of my favorite ways to knit socks, which is using DPNs. Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. We're chatting about DPNs today. I have five little tips and tricks and maybe a bonus tip or two at the end. This is not just applicable to socks, though I'm gonna focus on socks. You can knit any small circumference in the round with DPNs. If you're knitting sweater sleeves or the top of a hat, this is gonna be applicable to you as well. Before we jump into things, be sure to hit that little subscribe button down below and the bell to get notifications if you wanna see what knitting related content I have coming up in the future. And if you're enjoying this video and you're getting something out of it, learning something, or you just had a good time watching, hit the little like button down below and leave a comment and let me know how you like to knit your socks and other small circumferences. So I've knit a ton of different socks. I've cast it on using Magic Loop with a long circular needle, and I've also cast it on using DPNs. And I won't lie, casting on with DPNs is a little bit fiddly. If you try to cast your stitches on evenly between the three or four DPNs that you're using. So one trick that I found that has made it a lot more palatable is to cast all your stitches on to one needle. Then after you've casted them all on, slip the stitches off that one needle and evenly distribute them among all of the needles that you're gonna use. When I do this, I slip the stitches off the back end, so that first stitch that I cast on would be the first one I slip off. And once I fill up one needle, I just drop it, it's held by those stitches, I grab the next needle that I'm going to use, and I start slipping stitches from there until all of my stitches are distributed among the three or four needles, depending on your preference, that you're going to use to knit with. Then when you're done with that, you can join just like normal to knit in the round. So my next tip is about avoiding laddering at the intersection of two needles. When you're knitting with DPNs, it can be a little bit scary because you have way more needle intersections than if you were knitting Magic Loop where you just have the two, one on either side. But there are a couple things that you can do to avoid laddering. My favorite trick is to be mindful of where the needle that you're gonna knit onto is positioned relative to your other two needles. The needles you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to are the needle that you're knitting onto, the one that you're holding in your right hand, and you're gonna look at it relative to the needle that you just finished knitting off of. If your first stitch is a knit stitch, you're gonna to wanna to come under the needle you just finished knitting off of and enter that first stitch and knit it. If the first stitch is a purl, you're gonna to want to have your needle you're knitting onto be above the needle you just finished knitting off of and purl that first stitch. And it's gonna feel really natural whenever you do it this way. And if you do it any other way, you're gonna be fighting with your needles and your yarn. So it's very easy to remember, but this allows you to make sure that you have no extra yarn in this process, which is gonna help you to avoid the laddering that you may get if there's a little bit of extra yarn in that first stitch. So you're just gonna to wanna to always pay attention. For the knit stitch, your needle you're knitting onto be under the needle you just finished knitting off of, and for purl, be over the needle you just finished knitting off of. And that should help you make sure that you don't get any laddering at those intersections of two needles. So my next tip is about beginning of round markers. If you put a stitch marker at the beginning of your needle before your first stitch, it is just gonna fall off because there's nothing there to hold it. I know it seems so basic not to put it in that same spot, but to me, this was sort of like a problem when I first started. And so I had to retrain myself to put my stitch marker after my first stitch. So when I'm knitting with Magic Loop or in the round on circular needles, my stitch marker always goes before my first stitch. When I'm knitting on DPNs, my stitch marker always goes after my first stitch. And it's just a mental thing that I had to like make that switch and remember. The other thing that you can do is rearrange your stitches so that your beginning of round doesn't actually happen at the intersection of two needles. Your beginning of round can start anywhere. So if you put it in the middle of a needle, then you can put a stitch marker in the normal place and it won't go anywhere because there are stitches before and after it to hold it in place. I just really like to have my first stitch be at the beginning of a needle. So 
I put that marker right after the first stitch. But whatever works for you is perfect. Just remember that you do have to think about that stitch marker a little bit differently. The next tip I have for you is about making sure your needles stay put in your fabric. So tip four is about making sure they don't go anywhere whenever you're knitting. And tip five is about making sure they don't go anywhere when you're not knitting. When you're knitting, if you find that your needles keep falling out of your fabric, because you will have them just kind of dangling there, or they feel like they're just dangling there when you're knitting, then maybe you're not using the right needles for that yarn. So if your stitches just slide right off your needles, try a different set of DPNs. Try a bunch of different needles if you have access to them and see what you like the best. I love working with Knitter's Pride's Nova Platina Cubics. They're square needles. I feel like they're comfortable to hold and they do slide around a lot, but I don't have any issue with my needles sliding out. But some people really like knitting with bamboo because they maybe knit a little bit looser and the stitches can slide off really easy. So just see what works for you and don't give up until you find the right needles. And tip five is making sure that your needles don't slide out when you put your project away. If you put your project in a project bag or if you put it in your purse and take it with you to knit in line somewhere, I think you should invest in a DPN Cozy. These DPN needle cozies go right over the needles and they make sure that your project doesn't go anywhere. I think these DPN needle cozies are really fun knitting notions to get. They come in so many cute patterns. You can find a ton on Etsy. A lot of makers make these. I've seen leather ones. I've seen little tubes that are hand carved from wood. There are so many options and they come in at all different price points. So don't be afraid of the cost. I'm sure you can find one that works for you. So those are my five main tips. My bonus tips are, don't be afraid to switch up what kind of needles you're using in the same sock. Sometimes I'll knit the cuff of a sock on Magic Loop, switch to DPNs for the leg, switch back to Magic Loop to do the heel, switch back to DPNs to do the foot, and then Magic Loop again for the toe. I just really like using certain needles and certain techniques for certain parts of the sock, and it's not hard at all to switch them because you're just knitting off of whatever needles you were using before, so there's no extra effort involved. And I find that this lets me really enjoy the process at every step of the way. So switch it up, see what works best for you on every different part of the sock. And then the second bonus tip I have for you is just practice. Some people say that knitting with DPNs feels so unnatural or it just feels like you have a bunch of stuff in your hands and it's gonna feel that way until you practice and you get good at it. But if you're practicing and you really don't like it, you do not need to know how to do this. There's nothing that you can't do with magic loop or two circulars that you can do with DPNs. So there's no reason to feel like you need to learn it if you don't like it. Just do what feels the best and what is the most fun. That's really all I have today about DPNs. I hope you're enjoying your summer knitting. I hope you love knitting socks as much as I do. And if you don't, I have a video in the description down below that will give you some resources about how to knit socks. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're a DPN person or a magic loop person or two circular needles and enjoy your knitting. I will talk to you later.